Hey there, Booktube. Noah. Everyone who reads and must converse is the channel. Thanks for coming by again. Let me tell you, today is a special day. And, uh, you know, and to commemorate it, I'm doing a special live, right? Um, we're live right now. And I have the, the selection of books from a Slovenian, uh, a press in Slovenia called Coronasamas.press. The selection that I uh, have is right here. And today, I'm going to welcome the author, uh, Rick Harsh, Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas. It's an awesome book. And he is the chief editor of the press. Um, we're going to have a little discussion. We'll see why he started the press. Um, all that kind of stuff. If y'all got any questions or anything, just shoot them in the chat. We'll, uh, we'll talk it out. We'll have some fun. Hey, JD. John Dixon in the house. Thank you for coming by, brother. Um, Recognition's book club in the house. Always a pleasure to see you, bud. We're going we're gonna to talk about, you know, like, what, 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 what uh, for what reason the, the press was started, um, what it's like to run a press, and what's, on, what's going on with the press right now, and then a little bit of what's coming up with uh, Corona Summers Press because uh, there's some pretty awesome stuff in the works. So let me see if I can get Rick on. Hey, Rick. I'm in the show. Everybody can Rick see and hear me. Everybody uh, can see I, you and converse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to get that title down. Every Everyone who reads it must converse. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it's the first time I've ever said it right. Thanks for getting on with me, brother. Uh, me and Rick have a pretty cool uh, friendship going on. Uh, he turns me on to literature that I never knew uh, was possible, like uh, the use of language in The Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas, and I kick his ass in chef. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. I mean, it's true. <laughs> it's true, but it's not fair. Is uh, uh, I'm, I'm old. Hey, um, you know, when I'm old, I'm going to be even better than I am right now. So I don't know uh, what the age has anything to do with it. Um, well, uh, <laughs> dementia. <laughs> and, uh, that, I mean, maybe it takes a bit of dementia to write some of the amazing. I mean, I, it's just it's unbelievable what you can do with language, brother. Um, so Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas came out last year. Is that right? Yeah, in April, April 24th, I think. Right, 2020. One, one hell of a year of uh, release of book. But how uh, it worked out, what, what, what happened with the... Theory, with, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what happened with the printing of that, and, and, and it was supposed to be released, actually led to the inception of Press. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's it. well. Also, um, "Walk Like a Duck," the baseball book, um, which you don't have, right? I don't have "Walk Like a Duck." Okay, I, I, I got, on, I got it. The way. it. It's on the way. Yeah. back to you. The eraser man, <laughs> Dad sent, sent me a message that says, "Yeah," um, but then it covers up our faces. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, hey, Buffalo Billy, how are you? Uh, you wanna, you wanna, uh, you wanna share a little bit about uh, why you started the press and just the inception of uh, of the press? Yeah, you know, it's it's impossible to do it without um, uh, uh, speaking ill of he who is not yet dead. But um, Peter Damien Bellis started, uh, or he had his own press, and. Uh, Five times, we'll, we'll make this short, five times he scheduled uh, the printing of Eddie Vegas and about three times the printing of Walk Like a Duck. And we finally got a little attention when Stephen Moore read the book. Do I have to talk this loud or am I talking? Is this, how's um, my, how's my. To me, you're kind of, you're kind of loud, but it's good to project. It's all good. Okay. I, I, I always think that you're really far away. Um, I can hear you. I can hear you perfectly. 
Okay. Well, okay. So, so we get a little attention because uh, Stephen Moore likes the book. We get a nice blurb on the cover of the book. And that dumbass, uh, Bellis, wanted to, uh, um, well, when it, when it came time to publish the books, we had, we had arranged with Chris Villa to review it on Leaf by Leaf. He had already done another of my books. And uh, but Bellis, yeah, exactly. And, uh -huh. and, and uh, <laughs> uh, when it, he, he didn't want to tell me what was really going on, which was a very simple thing that we all do. We went, he went broke, and but he wouldn't tell me that. Uh, right. All he could say is we could only publish uh, the advanced copies. We, we'd have to go to press with, you know, the, 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 the grand opening of the novel would be advanced copies, right? Is that what yeah. you got, an advanced copy? Yeah. Uh, no blur on that. I got, uh, I got your, I got your, I got your copy. Oh, okay. Yeah, good, good. Um, I got. You want to see it? Here's a, one of the one copy of the 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 advanced or the copy. The engines came and got it. Nice. I don't know if you get the arrow there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, he got, he I barely. Got that. You know. That when they, there, some critics, I mean, the white people, they, when they, the critics do it all with, with the kid gloves, you know, uh, they just write shit and that doesn't hurt anybody. But when the engines come, you know, that they, they, they got bow and arrow, you know, right. So I get out of here. I, I, that's the only copy of advanced copy I've got left. But anyway, I had to, um, I, 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 he had no money and, and we had, uh, Chris via reading the thing and ready to come out with uh, a review and they weren't going to, and he was going to have enough uh, like 15 or 16 books. He hadn't done anything with ducks. And so I panicked. I borrowed some money and uh, with the intention of, of giving it to him to buy the books. And then I started thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's never going to pay that back. And also this is just wrong. Right. And then I thought, well, I got connections here. I've been pr published here. So uh, I call, I, I, on a Sunday, I called my old uh, publisher. And on Friday, I had both books in my hands. Nice. So it was like five days. Right. And it was all so, done. And I, the but, copy uh, that you're speaking about is Leaf by Leaf. To anybody who's unaware, it's the YouTube channel Leaf by Leaf. He did an awesome yeah, review. That's Manifold Destiny. That's how I got turned on to this book. I still get um, maybe one or two orders a week because of Leaf by Leaf. Yeah, well, I mean, his channel, his channel is great. And people are constantly, it's just constantly growing. And so uh, I'm glad to hear it. That's for sure. So um, it was the, the inception of the press was to save an awesome book from, you know, not not being able to get out there and be published when uh when it was time for it and i'm i for one am super glad that you did it because man this this book is badass but uh <laughs> well we'll we'll touch back on manifold destiny of eddie vegas a in a little bit maybe when we talk about what's coming up in the future for the press but i wanted to yeah. and you can show your driftless trilogy because all i have of your original driftless trilogy is the uh, hardcovers that were uh, published back in the day of the Dripless Zone and Billy Verite. <laughs> and then there's another book called Sleep of the Aborigines. Is that correct? No, it's The Sleep of Aborigines. The Sleep of Aborigines. So you, you actually, Sleep with your press, The Sleep of Aborigines, uh, your press has combined the three Driftless novels into one uh, pocket book. That's a fat little book, right? Yeah, I got. Well, you know, you, you you had me pile up the books, and you know, but if I pull here, there are these are all over the place because I I had no idea how many to print. So here here it it looks like uh, looks like that. <laughs> so you're getting yeah. you're getting a lot of comments on your hat, Rick. It's a gray hat. And uh, one question that's come really? up so far is how many? Hats how do you know? Do you I don't know. I got about 50 hats, I think. Uh, <laughs> I know just, it's a great hat. That might be a little tight. Uh, tight? Oh, look, it comes right <laughs> off. Um, 
Yeah, I, I I'm ner- nervous about my 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 brain right now, so I'm I'm wearing loose hats. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, you can. I also found out about Rick through the brilliant Chris. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, you can see who. Uh, um, yeah, Michael Keene. He's a Wisconsinite. Hi, Michael. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure some of the content. So uh, he's, that's, he's uh, from Sheboygan Falls. Sheboygan. Nice. Sheboygan so my, Falls. Just yeah. to finish, yeah, okay. up, finish up talking about Rick's own work, uh, Arjun and the Good Snake, that's going to be my next read from the press. Uh, this is a semi-autobiographical or, or fully autobiographical. I don't I haven't. It's, read it's it. a memoir. It's a memoir. It's a memoir. So there's no, there, there are not enough lies in it. OK, so uh, this will be my next read. And uh, I can't wait to get some more of your uh, use of language, brother. But uh, you 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 publish all kinds of authors on your press. And I've had the joy of reading, too, so far. Vardaman, David Vardaman. Uh, this is a collection of short works. Awesome. That's I got a, I got a review for. For that. Yeah, that's an excellent review. review. People should look that up. Um, the uh, uh, the um, that's the book that made the press what it is because uh, I had to make a press to publish the book, but I'm still trying to sell Driftless Zone in the U.S. and that's yeah. why I, I called it Sam's Dot because I, I I had to pretend I couldn't sell it in the U.S. But when uh, uh, Tinfoil Hats well, you know, you're from Wisconsin, of course. We all we yeah, all wear yeah. Wisconsin. Gotta have that. It's a tinfoil inner sleeve. Wisconsin. It's the Georgia of the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So I, I love Vardamans, and I and I and I and I appreciate you uh, getting uh, Salus's book, uh, "See Above, Some Below," in a in a uh, in a binder. Uh, how many that, of these do you have left? Um, probably about 20 and uh, with a promise to print 30 more at least. Okay, so we got um, between 20 and 50 left of this edition, this, this small, the pocketbook edition, and then it will not yeah. be available anymore. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, cool. though, that and Bory Proper's book, uh, Cynicism Management, were um, – also going to be published by um, uh, Riverboat Books. But w- when I, I started the press, I didn't know if Riverboat was going to come through with anything. And so uh, I asked George, do you want me to, you know, take over the publishing or, you know, at, anyway, but we, what we worked out was that it would be kind of half and half. I would be the back the backup publisher sort of. Um, nice. And uh, but I, I was quicker, but um, he wanted to stick with uh, Riverboat because he'd put a year of uh, bullshit into it. And so, right. as it turned out, uh, I think Bellis, uh, I, li- I like the little one better, of course, but uh, but Bellis has the same book. So, right. I don't know if he ever if he published uh, Cynicism Management, though. I haven't seen it on there. Um, I did see that See Above, Some Below is available again now uh, because for a while there it was saying that, you know, not, not, none were available. It was not uh, – there wasn't any copies available. So uh, really? that's why I got it. Yeah. But now, I mean, over the last few months, I mean, I'm sure it was the same kind of thing, you know. I mean, uh, it's just what it is. So uh, another uh, – yeah, well, we- Wait, it is what – whenever people say it is what it is, I'm I, – I, I, I want to make sure what, well, what is that? Especially well, in this case. Was, what is it? Uh, well, what you said it was, um, as far as I can see, is a uh, slippery moral. Uh, slippery moral. That doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't get managed very well. Uh, I see. And the, book, <laughs> the books are available sometimes you know, and not a, you never know. <laughs> I've, 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 I've come close to running out of, uh, the, uh, of Eddie Vegas a couple times. But right. what you do is you, you see that you're getting low. You contact the printer, 
and right. you order more and and you know you don't have to buy a hundred you can buy 20 you know so uh right. um not i'm not sure you know it, there should be some differentiation made could be it could be that george's book just went on a a boom and and sold so many so fast but the problem is when you write to the guy and ask him a question about the availability of a book um you're not sure the answer you're getting is accurate and i don't yes. want to spend too much more time on him but i want to give you an example because I hear he has roberto arlt the the he's got the only copy of the second half of the seven mad men which is called the flamethrowers and uh i i wrote him to make sure that he had enough because there's always been talk of me printing it if it were necessary and uh and he said those are selling great no problem i got plenty of them and then i talked to chris via and chris via was still waiting for him to come back into print <laughs> no <laughs> Jeez. So, and I, okay, over, so, uh, so speaking of out of print stuff one one of the coolest things that is uh, has has begun and is happening with your press right now is a return of Chandler Brossard to being back in print. You've done Raging Joy, Sublime Violations, small little slim work. You did that in the pocket style, and then just recently we got Wake Up. We're almost there. This beast and and the cover is so good. Thank you to uh, Zach Tanner. Right. Yeah, what he a, did a great job. What a great cover. The binding is awesome. I can't wait to get into this one. I'm going to do this with uh, As the Wolf Howls at My Door back to back. And um, it's going to be a wild experience, I think. So um, you want to talk a little bit about bringing Rosard back and why you why you uh, got in and how maybe you got in? What I, see a question. I see a question there. Uh, do I answer the questions? Do you see the same question? I, there's a oh, question yeah, yeah. for Rick. Well, I, I have it sitting there just so we can answer it whenever we feel like. Sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. How many books I'll leave you me. work on? You control it then. You control yeah, the questions. <laughs> okay. So what, I mean, what, I want to you have... your deal, you know what I mean? So I want to move on. I want to give everybody a, an okay. idea about what the press yeah. is all about before we – I'm just trying to figure out here. the uh, – I'm trying to figure out the techno shit. Uh, um, uh, so what was your question about Broussard? Um, just, that was just, if you, just if you wanted to say something about, uh, why yeah. and how you got the, the damn war. right. I want to say something. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you know, why Broussard, why, why Broussard well, and what, what got you there? I'll tell you, uh, that fucking Darkenville's cat, um, I ordered it and it never came and I got my money back. And the only reason I ordered it, it was some murky personal shit. I didn't have the money. I shouldn't have done it. So I was glad to get the money back, but I was still pissed off that some asshole is selling that book, which is just a book, a book. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's right. like, like this. It's a, it's like, a fiction novel. Uh, so they're selling it for outrageous prices. Because it's scary, but it's not its not like a signed copy or anything like that. And people are selling it for over 100 bucks now, uh, maybe more. And, you know, so I'm, I'm already pissed off enough about that kind of thing. But uh, this uh, um, Broussard, I, I was reading Stephen Moore, and, and, and I read his Broussard chapter, and I said, "Fuck, this guy's great. I gotta get this guy's books," and and they're they're not available. And uh, right. Darkenville Squat is even worse. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a piece of crap book. I I can tell you that for sure. Well, it is until it costs less than thirty bucks. <laughs> that, that, you know, so <laughs> the, the thing is, so I. So I, I, I looked, I couldn't find the book, so I contacted Stephen Moore, and he, of course, knew who to ask for permission, and I talked to Broussard's widow, 
And uh, I said I wanted to publish his three best books. Uh, with, I mean, for me, the most relevant ones. Um, now, I, you know, the weird thing about Andrew Skelton's books is they're all sluts. I've kissed his books. I've kissed. I've licked his Thoreau copy. I've, 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 I've kissed every book I've ever picked up, pretty much. I, I only do it to other people's books. I've dry humped. <laughs> I've dry humped. Uh, I never, never, never Corona Somerset books, though. Those only my well, dog touched. So, yeah. so, you're, so you're saying you jipped me. I, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sperm your book. Jesus. <laughs> you know. Well, I mean. I mean, unless, unless I I'm you, asked. I heard you wrote your. Uh, I heard you wrote your uh, signature in blood in one of them. So I mean, you know, I thought all yeah, the fluids were on the table. Did you get your hands on that yet? No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take my trip up to. Uh, I'm gonna take my trip up to Oregon. Oh. And go. Uh, Did and you go, write? And go, See, Cliff, sorry, better than food. I, I, I did send him an email. <laughs> we'll see if I get a response. Well, if you haven't gotten one by now, we may have to go on up there. Yeah, it might be time. I mean, you know, I drive it. I mean, they see my uh, 1987 Dodge pickup truck pull up in front of his uh, yuppie apartment flat. He'll give up With the book. With nine serves in back. Right. Yeah, he'll give up the book, brother. He'll give it up. <laughs> <laughs> so um i'm i'm really excited for chandler brossard myself to read it um and you got you just had a new book come out yep corona summer is doing so much stuff you're really active with um new titles all the time you just you just put out this short erotic fiction is that right uh yeah yeah we, we um because that's the first one we got um you know i uh, we've scheduled uh, Bill Clark of Toronto, or no, not Toronto, Ontario somewhere. Um, and uh, I just keep waiting for him to give me the book. And then if, when we get the money, we print it. And, you know, so we're still waiting for that. Uh, oh. We got another Jeff Percy coming out um, nice. that a, uh, uh, a citizen, uh, a book fan, offered to pay for one of our books. And, nice. he, you know, he, he want, unbelievable, you know, I, I actually got a tear in my eye when I saw that. I mean, what a nice thing, you know, and, uh, uh, and he, he decided, I said, I know he likes Bercy. So I said, hey, we, you know, we got a Bercy, a book of Bercy short stories coming out. And so that's perfect. So he'll pay for it. And right. basically what we've, we've done is uh, plan books and. Um, we get the money, all the, all the money goes back into the press, which is, you know, something that I hope to stop at some point, uh, maybe after a year or two, I can pay my rent out of this, but, um, otherwise we're, we're, we're definitely going to be nonprofit. And so, sure. uh, that, yeah. So, all right, let's, sure. uh, let's take some questions let's take, so I can get them out of the way. Um, how many books do you work on? writing and planning at any given time, right? Uh, and it, there's just no, no telling, uh, depends on the time because especially lately I've been, I just finished my end of, uh, Olaf Palme. It's only going to be two volumes, um, instead of the three or four that I projected. And, uh, there are a couple of people who have, uh, assignments out and I, when I get them, I have to write them into the book. Uh, but uh, working on that and other things is is almost necessary, and so which is kind of a, a an odd thing. It doesn't. It's not all consuming, um, and also because I, I uh, there th though there are are, are there's you know skeletal uh, bits that have to remain in some semblance of a skeleton. Um, the book can go a lot of different directions. It ended where mm -hmm. I, I wanted it to end. And, but throughout, you know, I never know what I'm going to get. Uh, I had a really, really great experience recently with, uh, three assignments. Um, three people had the same assignment. Um, 
because I didn't know if one person was going to do it. And, um, and then I, I saw someone else who had his name on the book and I thought, Oh, I should give him an assignment. And, and, and he did it before the other guy and the other guy did it. And, uh, and it, it worked so well having two copies of the same thing that are, you know, with, it's a memo, basically. It's right. a memo. They all have, they have to write a memo. One of my main characters had to die. I figured out the way he would die, told them how he would die, and they had to write a memo about it. And uh, they did. And then, then I ended up giving Vardaman. Vardaman did a, a few things. And uh, you never know what's going to happen in his mind. And so I gave it to him, knowing it would not in the least resemble the other two which didn't resemble each other. So there are three memos about this guy's death that presented in three different ways. And, nice. uh, and it, yeah, yeah. I, I, all I have to do is uh, uh, absorb it into the text with the conversation. So there also the is a little bit of a future coming up with the press because the assassination of Olaf Palme is a book that's out now, the first volume. But the second volume is the one being worked on right now. So um, the assassination of Olaf Palme is actually a big book. Like the like I have the uh, Chandler Brossard and the Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas here. And then uh, the assassination of Olaf yeah, Palme. Yeah. And then your. It's uh, technically called a big book. For the sale purposes, this is known as a big book. Um, right. But it's really not that big. Uh, like, you know, here, here you got the. Uh, you get the idea there? Yeah. It's not that big, but it's bigger than those. But, right. um, but the, uh, yeah, so that, that, in terms of the sale, this counts as a big book. Um, but, um, the, actually the, you know, the, the, the problem with, you want, you know, there's a question about the, uh, the press. I can answer, wait, how did you settle on Isla? as a place to move to? Is it because you like uh, Emile Zola? Of course. I mean, what other reason could there be? Um, that's a question <laughs> from Recognition's book club. Um, I've, I, I, I try not to read Zola because, uh, you know, not my century, not my language. Um, and uh, But look at this. Look at this. Um, I found this. I was cleaning up uh, my uh, warehouse. I'm in right now. And I found this movie, Paul Muni as Emil Zola. Nice. Um, I, I finished half of it. And I had to get some sleep, and I haven't watched the other half, so that'll tell you how impressed I was. Um, it, it won the Oscar that year. And, uh, nice. yeah. Very cool. How, how valuable was the MFA experience at Iowa? Um, my answer would be uh, different from, even if I said, uh, $23,415, that'd be different for two people. Um, it, it's, a it's a, it's, it's a very valuable experience if you're not overly sensitive, uh, Scarface, one of the Scarfaces, um. Yeah, uh, Iowa is is uh, valuable if you need time to write, and you, you you don't give a shit what anybody says about your work. I mean, it's not like you don't learn stuff, but you know, like Noah at at, at, at your your job, right? Uh, if somebody comes up and tells you something valuable, you know immediately, right? Right. I mean, and if they tell you something that you just don't need to know. Then you just give them an, a bemused smile. And right. If they tell you something that's just plain <laughs> stupid, you say, that's, that's, I'm sorry, but that's stupid. Uh, so it's like that with the MFA. If you if you get a if you get financial support, it's it's worth it. If not, it's definitely not. Um, I think uh, two out of two years. I and I had. Uh, um, a seminar, Dennis Johnson teaching under the volcano. And that was one of the most useless experiences 
I've ever had. Damn. He was, he was, just a, you know, he's a likable guy, uh, a likable writer, but um, he was just cruising and um, uh, any idiot could say anything they wanted in that class. And I thought it was going to be one of those exciting moments in life. And, uh, you know, uh, I'd actually been better off banging Barbara Streisand from behind. Than, well, yeah. mind, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, look, I think she was such a looker back in the day. Hey, Rick, um, we're yeah. at 30 minutes right here. Okay. And, I mean, we're after 30 minutes, so the 30-minute mark is what I'm going to put in the timestamp. And so the okay. first thing that somebody, when they hit that timestamp, will hear that you would be better off banging Barbara Streisand. And then okay. we're going to give them the deal. What's the deal that you're uh, that we're going to give on your on your books today? <laughs> well, we're giving out little uh, Barbara Streisand dolls. Um, yeah, a and, Streisand doll, baby. Um, you yeah, said any two any two big books. Yeah, that's Wake yeah. Up. We're almost there. Your Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas. Walk Like a Duck. Your uh, baseball book, and Olaf Palme. Any two yeah, of those. You just you just named five books, but there's only four. I don't know what I named. That that is uh, right. um, Eddie Vegas. There four. Yeah. These four. Uh, yeah. Can you see them? Okay. These oh, these okay. four. Walk like a duck. Yeah. Chandler Brassard. Any, any two Eddie of those. Vegas. Any two of those, you get a pocketbook free. Any in of pocket. the. Any pocketbook except uh, Tenderlopolis came out. Tenderlopolis so is the uh, uh, erotic fiction. So yeah, any, any of the uh, any any pocketbook, and and there's a there's more than what I got. Yeah, the Jeff Bercy, unidentified man that left the photo. Uh, your Driftless yeah, trilogy is uh, is these, in on that. Okay, the, yeah. these three. The cynicism man. Cool. Uh, so these, any two big books, one one pocket book, and then what's the other deal? What are we doing? Uh, you said two for twenty. If somebody, well, you know the problem is you don't want to pay people, or I mean, you don't want to make people buy more than they want. So what if somebody just wants one big one, right? And uh, you know, then you give them a, a give them you know a, you give them the shaft. No. If you buy any of the four big ones, you get um, any of the, the smaller ones have price. That's my there's cousin. A, there's a good looking Rick Harsh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I, I was. He definitely has a look at Before and after. <laughs> yeah, are we can talk about this deal, or, I mean, Am I wasting my time here? Or what, what's uh, going on here? Uh, wait, huh? Yeah, man. Uh, so so the, the, uh, second, said, the second deal, if you just want to buy one big book, why should you be left out of the deal? You get any pocketbook you want half price. Nice. Okay, so one big book instead of buying two, one big book, and then you get a pocketbook for half price, which is like five to seven or eight euros, right? Well, I think we'll probably be five euros. We we should treat them all as ten euro books. Okay. Um, yeah. That's good. So for the yeah. for purposes of the sale, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, it's hard to price these motherfuckers, you know. But the um, the other now I'm now I'm thinking of well, what if what if somebody wants two little ones and one big one? Right. Well, write me, and this is a key. This is halftime. Okay. I've given two deals. Now, at, at halftime, I want to make it clear that if there's a, a deal that, that you want, but it doesn't seem to fit, just write me and we'll, we'll discuss it. You know, like, right. uh, like if, you want, uh, if you want three, any three pocketbooks, you can have any three, including Tenderlopolis, for 20 euros so that's three for the price of two but what if nice. you want huh nice right that's good 
That's good. Okay. That's good deal. Uh, so if if you uh, <laughs> if, if <laughs> what if you want what if you want that deal and you want Olaf Palme? What are you going to do? I don't pay know. What price? are we going to do? Pay full price for Olaf Palme? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. But write to I me. Might, I might pay pay full price. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, write you a uh, email. <laughs> write me an email. If if none of these four magnificent deals is magnificent enough or conforms to your worldview, then we can deal with that. So um, so the the third deal is the only pocketbook deal. You get I mean only you only want pocketbooks, right? So then what right, you right. do is you give me twenty bucks, you get three for the price of two. Or you could get give me twenty for one and you have two free. Um, however, however you want to look at twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right. But then I started thinking, you know, you know, I, I, consumers consumers um, are are commodif commodified sheep. You know, uh, their their brains are commodified and so on. But book 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 people aren't consumers, so they they do a lot of thinking and they're so they're sneaky bastards. So here's what we're gonna do. They're gonna say, "Okay, let's weigh Harsh's books. Uh, we got uh, the Driftless trilogy, and uh, three for the price of one right there." Yeah, it's sixteen fifty originally. Look, look, they're falling. So you, they're gonna say, "Hey, that's three novels right there, right?" Right. And then they're gonna say, "What's the next biggest one?" And and it's only one novel, but it's the same size as uh, Driftless trilogy, Cynicism Management. And right. look, it's got a. Uh, a, a man with boobs or a, a lady with a penis on it. I mean, it's a really great cover. Um, and then, Noah, I'm gonna, it's a quiz for you. What's the third book they're going to get? Uh, the third book they're going to get after that, if they're, if they're going for weight and, like, you know, to get the biggest one, um, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know which one's the next, uh, the next, the flip book, Vardaman Flip. They get the yeah. Vardaman Flip two novels. Yeah, the two, two for the price of one right there. Yeah, two uh, show the Vardaman Flip again because we haven't talked about that. Vardaman has uh, two novels in one, and Rick printed them as this flip book. Yeah, it's really really cool. One on each side. Yeah, it it is, and I think if Michael Keane is still there, he'll tell you he wrote a nice review of this in uh, uh, Goodreads, and uh, it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. Cool. April yeah, is the uh, cruelest month, and then suddenly, yeah. suddenly uh, the summer, right? Right. But then you know what they're cool. going to do? They've got these three books. They've got the most for their money, and and it, you know, I mean, come on, it's seven less than seven a book, and they're going right. to get away with that? It's not fair. Uh -huh. It's not fair. Hey, so you hey, know what hey, they're hey. going to do? Tell me. They're going to go. They're going to say, "Hey, what about the?" Uh, uh, Vardaman's other book because that's got 14 different pieces of fiction in it. Right, and they're, and they're going to think gonna... Yeah. Huh. They're fun stuff. So they're going to say, Rick, how about we take that for five bucks? And they know I'm a sucker and I'll say, yeah, five bucks. <laughs> so now, now this is what they got. For 25 bucks, they've got that, you know, <laughs> enough fiction for three months. You know, and uh, I mean, so so I thought, well, let's come at them a different way. And I decided, you know, I wasn't going to have any any uh, sales with Tenderlopolis in it. It's seventy grams. You 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 guys who do coke know what that is. Um, but uh, you got uh, the my three thin books. Look at this. This is called the mini pack. I decided we got to have a mini pack to tempt Go people to away. From, uh, we got that's right. huh? Yeah, the three, yeah. the three the little Tenderlopolis and uh, that Chandler Brossard's raging joy, sublime violation. Yeah, look at I, I wrote it up a little bit on the uh, um, the web page, you know, because cool. this is a powerful pack. I mean, you get nice. you get some wild nice. shit here, um, and so. You know, for but that's for fifteen. 
uh, nah. three for 15 because it's so damn small and also to try to lure people from their 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 greed. You know, well, I mean, uh, you've already just spelled out how to, uh, you know, destroy the press, right? So I, now we'll, I, I now hope, we'll I hope, I hope it, <laughs> just, just to keep it. We're just trying to get enough money here to produce for the future. Right. That's a segue. Well, Rick, this has been really, really fun. But um, wait, are we running out of time? We're we're at forty minutes, man. I want to cut it. I want it to be uh, something you look that over is, your uh, shoulder there. We got to talk about the uh, America. Well, this is this is a teaser, right? Now this is uh this is what's coming. This is something that's coming up in the future for Corona Summers diet. Uh, you want you want to say a little something about it? Maybe uh a little something about what you've uh, come in contact with so far. It has something to do with Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas, I know. Well, I'll tell you, uh, can you give me two minutes? Sure. I've never experienced anything like this before in my life. Uh, you know, ev everybody who, who buys books contacts me by email, and they're right. strangers. So I get a guy who lives on Rugby Road in Buffalo, Phil Friedenberg. Uh, Rugby Road, you know. You're going to give it to We'll all go see him. I, I just, I was right away. I'm thinking, you know, like uh, I make doing the Tom Waits, you know, sell that real and right. scratch ass Jack. And, and the guy picks up on it immediately. And him and his pal, who's the illustrator, Jeff Walton, they, they, they send me back another verse in the Tom Waits song. And it's got something to do with cactus boots. And then next thing I know, He's writing a novel about waiting for my novel to come. And so his book is written by him with illustrations by Jeff Walton and transmissions from Eddie Vegas. Nice. And I've read I've read lots of, uh, you know, th this this length on uh, on the telephone, you know, on uh, uh, passages and every one of them is brilliant. I've never seen some someone so much on fire. That nice. guy's bursting with this. Uh, I, 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 I have a 73% belief that that book is going to be the best book we ever publish. Nice. And, Man, I tell you, I'm really, I'm really, really excited about it. It, from what I've uh, oh, seen and come in contact with. Sounds today, awesome. Today, tens of thousands of people are, are protesting in Russia. We've got uh, somebody amongst those crowd. There are two people who are translating a book about a guy, an opposition guy who was murdered by uh, the Putinesque uh, and uh, or doing the Putinesque. I don't know. But anyway, he was murdered in 2008. That book's coming out this year, too. Nice. And a Very long cool. play by David Vardaman, a play about Cotton Mather. It's going to be a weird year. It definitely is. It's going to be a yeah. weird 2021, guys. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we're all geared up for a weird one. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get more into the cult America, uh, the cult of the cactus boots, a diagnostic. Um, when did you get like, oh. I don't have any. <laughs> I, I need. I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff. I got to talk to them. Yeah, make America cult again. Yeah. I, That's where you can get your teasers, guys. That's where you get your <laughs> teasers at. So um, this has been just as fun and chaotic as I thought it was going to be, Rick. I love it. Yeah. Uh, part of the problem is I can't, I can't hear. I don't know who's talking. <laughs> I'm talking. And you're talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, just, I don't know. I, I hope I, I hope we answered any 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 unimportant questions. We answered we answered all the questions they fired at us. So this is cool. This will post on the channel. This will be something. Didn't have any questions, did they? Uh, well, the you know, they had, uh, we'll uh, we we'll, you know we'll watch the comments and um, I'm going to put all the pertinent information down in the description box. So thank you very yeah, much for coming, Rob. Put the important stuff too. 
I'm going to put the important, the important stuff. stuff. Yeah. I'll probably put a lot of unimportant stuff as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank but you, you said, time, my brother. I don't know what pertinent <laughs> means. This, this is the South Indian. South Indian, they, a lot of people do it one handed, honestly. Thanks for coming by, brother. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Bye, Noah. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody for a little special live with Rick. <laughs> Y'all have a good one and I'll catch you on, uh, on down the road. Bye-bye.